If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, for people who believe in the paranormal or supernatural, what was an event that made you a believer? I've always been and still am kind of a skeptic, but I did have one experience that made me question things. A cat I had for 8 years passed away in late 2020. Last year, on that exact day, around the exact time of night that he died, I was laying in bed and looking through old pictures of him when I suddenly felt a weight next to me in the spot he always used to lay in at night. I don't know if thinking about him made my brain recreate that feeling, or if I was tired and hallucinating, or if that little turd really is haunting me and I just wanted a quick snuggle, but it felt real as day to me. I never did before starting my current job, but I do now. I work in an impound yard, where we get dozens of wrecked vehicles a day. Some are fatalities. Weird stuff happens in my yard. There was this one fatality that had the airbags drooping down over the windows, but when security walked past, the airbag was stuck up in the door. So he opened the door and let the airbag fall back down. 30 minutes later, he's doing his rounds again, and the airbag is propped back up again. So he lowers it again, and he hears a woman's voice saying, don't shut it, it's dark out. Also, there's no attic in the main building, but at night, you can hear people walking and talking above the ceiling. The outbuilding has been locked and empty for years, but a light in the upstairs window goes on periodically. Anyone who has worked a night shift at this yard believes in ghosts. It happened to me when I was visiting friends in another state. They took me to see their friend's bar slash gaming hall, a place for food, drink, and board games, etc. The building was at least a hundred years old. The owner took us to see that he had renovated a back room so he could expand the business. It was a large room with fresh paint, wallpaper, and carpet. We all stood just inside the door of this room, talking. A young man, no older than 25, came in behind me, dressed in a mime outfit. It made me think of the 1970s. I thought he worked for the bar slash gaming hall. My back was actually close to the wall. So, when the young man tried to squeeze behind me, I thought he was trying to avoid interrupting our conversation, I stepped forward, looking back over my shoulder. I said, oh, excuse me. My friend looked at me and said, what? There was no one behind me. I did not tell anyone about it. Years ago, 08 or 09, I was driving home with my then girlfriend along a backcountry road. I took a left on a Y intersection and started to come over a shallow hill. From the left side of the road to the right side of the road, something crossed, and it took a total of two seconds of time to cross. It was a black shape, about four to five feet long and two feet tall separated from the ground by about a foot of air. It was nearly opaque and black, smoky, and solid, not a puff of smoke being swept by the wind. The entire perimeter of this figure was lined with swirling, wispy, smoky tentacles. In the first split second, I thought it was a panther because of its long, dark, and low profile, but it became obvious in the next split second that it was not. It hit the shallow, empty ditch on the right shoulder of the road and dissipated. There was no tall grass to disappear into. After about 5 seconds of stunned silence, I asked my girlfriend if she saw it. She said she didn't want to talk about it and never wanted to address it again. This thing almost looked cliché, evil, creepy, or bad. There is an old cemetery in the foundation of a burned down church in the direction this figure came from, about 100 yards down a road with several houses. The crazy thing is, I saw this back in 2008 or 2009. I saw the same thing just about 2 months ago in the same spot. After all that time, I literally yelled Mother Ducker when that happened. I don't know if it was a ghost or some type of supernatural, non-human creature. My money is on interdimensional beings. I ain't lying. Seeing it with someone else and then seeing it again years later really drives it home to me. I don't know if there is an afterlife or a supernatural realm. I do know there is something else there. Maybe science hasn't caught up to offer an explanation yet, if it ever will. I do believe in ghosts because I truly believe that I have seen one once. One night I was woken up at around 1am by a ghostly pale arm and hand slowly pushing open my squeaky bedroom door. The hand was quite high off the ground, which was odd because my husband wasn't home and the only other person in the house was my two-year-old son. I called out to my son, but there was no answer. I got out of bed and left my room, only to see that there was no one in the hallway. I switched on the hallway light and noticed smoke coming from my son's room at the other end of the hallway. I rushed over to his room and saw that he was fast asleep and still neatly tucked in under his blankets. His bed lamp was on as usual, and his bedroom window curtain somehow ended up inside the bed lamp, which was open at the top, and the curtain had begun to smolder, which was responsible for the smoke. 
It looked like it was about to catch fire at any moment. I removed the curtain from the bed lamp and potentially saved our home from burning down and my son from getting killed. I still don't know whose hand it was that opened my bedroom door. I like to think that it was a guardian angel or a ghost. I told my pastor about this experience, and he warned me that it could be an evil spirit trying to trick me into trusting it. I once lived in an old rectory next to an old church in the southwest of the UK. The house was from the 1600s. I lived there with four other students, and every now and again we would hear doors opening and somebody walking up the stairs when we would all be in the same living room together and all going to investigate to find nobody around. One summer, I stayed there on my own, having a summer job near my university. Over the course of a week, things started to get weird, doors banging, deep bass rumbles, and cupboard doors opening when walking into the kitchen. One night, while sitting and watching TV, I could clearly hear footsteps walking across the bedroom above me. I turned off the TV and clearly heard somebody upstairs. The next second, a huge bang, like somebody slamming a door as hard as possible, came from upstairs. I ran straight upstairs, only to find every door, six of them, wide open and nobody there. My bedroom was downstairs, and I knew that all the doors were closed earlier in the evening, and there weren't any windows open that could explain a random door shutting. Freaked out, I closed all the doors and went back down the stairs and back into the living room. As soon as I got back in there, the footsteps and banging started again. I ended up just turning the TV on and telling them slash it to shut up, and I didn't care. The noise stopped. Weird things continued to happen, but none were near as bad as that week. It definitely made me think that paranormal things happen that just cannot be explained. I grew up in a house that was built in 1880. I remember as a kid seeing a young girl walk around the house late at night. I have sisters, but they were both in bed. The weird part was that it wasn't scary at all. My mom later told me that one of my sisters had seen the girl and asked my mom to stop her from walking through the house because she was keeping her awake. It turns out my mom had noticed her too, but she was shocked that my sister had seen her. All three of us saw her independently, before we had ever talked about it. Later on, I asked my mom about a man who walks through the house. I had only heard him once, I didn't see him, but I knew that he was a man. He had really heavy steps, and he terrified me. He felt evil. I asked about him, assuming it was a childhood dream, and I wanted to make sure of that. My mom cut me off mid-sentence, she didn't want to talk about him. He scared her, too. Now, I'm skeptical as hell. I don't see ghosts everywhere, my childhood home is the only place I've experienced this. I think there's a scientific explanation, like a non-linear experience of time or something. But still, it seems supernatural, given that there's currently no way to explain it. I have a few. The first would be when my brother, mom, and I were home and kept having the radio in the garage turn on randomly. One day we were all up with it turning on and went out there and unplugged it. All three of us were standing there, and the button was pushed in and began to play. We ran out so fast and didn't mess with it until my dad came home. He would never believe us, even to this day. The other would be when my aunt was visiting around 2009. She came to our house, which she hadn't been to in almost 20 years since she helped us move. I had woken up for breakfast and walked into the kitchen. My mom, brother, aunt, and dad were all in there. We were just enjoying each other's company. My brother and I had let my aunt stay in our room while she was here so she could have a bed and we could get the living room. Out of nowhere, my aunt says, can I ask you guys a question? Have you ever seen a woman in a white dress standing in your closet just watching you? My brother and my mom completely dropped their food, and I just looked at her wide-eyed. For the longest time, me and my brother had seen this woman, and all she would do was stand in our closet and never move or anything. We never closed it because she never bothered us. To this day, I wish I could ask her more about what she saw. Since then, my parents have remodeled their entire house, and my mom hasn't noticed anything out of the ordinary. I was on the Manassas battlefield with my father when I was younger. We were sitting on the back of his tailgate, eating McDonald's, on top of a hill, looking at some cannons. It was foggy and misty out that day, with a slight chill, November, I think. All of a sudden, we see a man dressed in full Civil War attire waving at us, standing by the cannons, about 50 to 100 meters away. My dad had a pair of binoculars with him, and we got a closer look at the man. He appeared to be in a Confederate uniform and was standing stationary, only moving his arm to wave. My dad thought there was a reenactment going on and that the man needed help. So my dad walked down to the man while I watched with the binoculars. When my dad got close to the man, he stopped walking and had a confused posture. After a couple seconds next to the man, he turns around and sprints back to me. 
he proceeds to throw everything in the back of the truck, and we leave the battlefield in a hurry. My dad said while walking down there, the man slowly disappeared, and he got the strangest feeling in his stomach and mad chills. To this day, my dad gets the chills and goosebumps telling the story, my dad saw combat in Vietnam, so he is not an easy guy to scare. From my perspective, my dad was right next to the guy and never disappeared. We don't know what we saw, but I think it was a ghost. I had always believed a bit, but my personal experiences have been, weird. Mostly poltergeist activity has happened at two of the three houses. But one night, I had a disturbing episode of sleep paralysis. I'd experienced it before and after, but luckily I don't have visual hallucinations, except for this time. I was in bed, frozen, when a woman crawled onto me. She had beige, leathery skin, and instead of legs, she had six arms arranged like an insect. She hovered over my face and breathed, her gray teeth showing through a lipless mouth and strings of dirty hair. And then I woke up, terrified but thinking it was just weird sleep paralysis stuff. Then I smelled urine really strongly, like a bucket of it was up to my nose. I thought I'd pissed myself in fear, but I checked, and no, nothing. The smell left quickly, but the whole incident left me scared in a way no bad dream could. My theory is that there is some kind of minor demon, fey, or whatever that travels around, inducing nightmares to feed on fear. My dad was a boy scout as a kid. They used to go on a trip each year to take new scouts on their first camping trip. My dad had been a bunch of times before and used to take part in this game where you crept out to a nearby meadow with a clear line of sight to the camp, then had to sneak up on the campsite. New scouts would be made to camp right where my dad would sneak out, and his challenge was not to be seen. He was very good at this challenge and often won. The hardest part was the end, when he had to scale a semi-sloped hill behind the tents without anyone spotting him. So he was lying in the meadow, waiting for the right time to begin creeping forward. He realized he was being watched and turned to see, standing atop the ridge behind him, a figure. It was very tall, seemingly featureless, and because of the moonlight, he can tell it's black. And, like, in color, not race. Color. The skin is completely black, like oil or tar, or black like black paint. It has no face. My dad is perturbed, to say the least. Then it raises its arms, which my father quickly realizes are far, far too long for the body. It holds its hands limp at the ends of the wrists. The arms are rigid, the elbows locked, not straight out like a zombie, not at 90 degrees to the chest, but held higher. Then it begins to run at my father. So he bolts and legs it, panicking because this thing does not look human at all and doesn't move like a person. He said that he would look back, and when he saw it, it would be keeping an even pace, say, 25 feet behind him. Then he would look again, and it would have jumped up, so it's 20 feet, but he'd never see it move, just get closer. It never, ever lowered its arms. We tried to run like my dad described this thing, with our arms held out and a little up, running full tilt. It's not easy to stay upright. My dad ran like the devil was on his ass, but part of him still thought his friends might be pranking him. That's when his friends spotted him from the campsite, spotted what he was running from, and lost their ducking minds. They literally laid on top of the slope and reached down, throwing ropes for him to use to climb. The scout leader, a grown-ass man, a cynical World War II veteran, this was in the 60s, saw this thing and lost his SHT, bellowing for my father to duck and run. My dad hit the slope and was hauled up and over just as the thing closed on him. They looked, and it was gone. Just gone. But a dozen or more of them saw the same thing, the same outheld arms, but it just vanished. It turns out there is a huge local legend about the woods and what resides within, which they had all ignored until then. I had just beaten cancer when I was five years old. I was sleeping in between my parents and their beds, and it was about four in the morning. Anyway, I woke up and saw the bedroom door slowly open. A glowing figure stepped into the room and stood in the doorway, staring at me. It was very tall, and its face was blurry, but it looked like the Grim Reaper except it was wearing a pale white robe. As soon as I saw it, I tried waking up my parents. The exact moment that I did so, the figure backed out of the room, and the door slowly closed shut. My parents woke up right when the door closed. No one really believes me about this story, but it is true. I have always believed in ghosts, as my dad was one, but what convinced me was when we found out about my sister's friend. My sister, when she was about four, had a friend called Collier, not a usual name, and she always used to come home from school and talk about her day with her friend Collier. One day, when my mom went to pick up my sister, the teachers asked her if my sister had ever talked about her friends, etc. So my mom says she always talks about Collier, to which the teacher replies, 
Collier? We don't have anyone called Collier here. She assumes there is no big deal, it's probably just an imaginary friend. Anyway, skip a few months, and my mom's friend's dad is the historian of the village we lived in and is having a chat with my mom when she mentions my sister's friend. He then asks my sister to describe the boy, and then he goes to get a book. He skips through a few pictures and shows them to my sister, where she points out a boy and says that he is a collier. It turns out the little boy in the photo used to live in our house and was a collier in the coal mines, and that's where he died. I was six. I was at my aunt's house for a sleepover. She lived in the countryside, so there wasn't much for miles, but there was a forest behind her house. Me, my cousins, and my brother were sleeping in her living room because we had asked a couple hours before. Me and my cousin were still up in a dem, so we decided to go outside for a minute or two. It was a bit cold, but not so cold that we immediately went back inside. We were standing outside looking at the stars when, from the forest, we both saw a tall figure with beady yellow eyes step out of the shadows. The thing stood and looked at us for a minute, then we booked it back in the house. We didn't go back into the living room, instead, we grabbed my other cousin and my brother and went into a bedroom. My cousin locked the door behind him. We stayed in that room for hours. Then, as I was just about to doze off, we heard banging on the bedroom door. We immediately stood up and grabbed for the nearest object. He grabbed a baseball bat, and I grabbed his skateboard. We moved slowly to the door, and when he unlocked it and opened it, no one was there. We were a bit peckish, so we both grabbed sandwiches. But when I looked out the window, that's when I saw it. It had yellow eyes and a mutilated face, and it was drooling. I urged my cousin to look, but when he did, it was gone. I didn't get much sleep that night. Growing up, my sister was adamant that the family home was haunted. Based in the UK. Old school. There were lots of noises in the night, but I never saw anything. Fast forward to last year, my sister and I have moved out, and we sometimes stay at home when mum and dad are away to look after the house or animals. They had an extension done around 2018, and this included a large double bedroom with an ensuite that was added on where nothing was before. The room is set out so that the bed is directly opposite the door, and you can see out onto the landing. I was there with my dogs, and mom was in her bedroom at the other end of the house. Dogs are asleep on the bed with me, and I am woken by the noise of something running in the attic, loft, above my head, to the right of the room, and back again. I wasn't imagining it, the dogs were looking up to where the noise was coming from too. I put it down to rats or bats and turned over to go back to sleep. In my turnover, I noticed someone peering around the doorway. I distinctly remember it being a woman. I wasn't particularly scared, I was just unnerved. I thought at first it was my mom and said out loud, Mom? No response, so I asked again. At this point, I flicked on the light, and nothing was there. I got up, and sure enough, my mom was in bed. This was 4 a.m., so I went back to bed, a little shaken, and didn't say anything. A couple of months later, at Christmas, we were all at my mom's house, and my sister and her partner were attempting to get me to have a few drinks and stay the night, saying the big room was free. I immediately refused, and her boyfriend's face dropped, and he asked me why. I replied that I didn't feel comfortable in that room, and without prompting, he asked me if I'd seen the lady, and described the exact same scenario I'd experienced. It turns out that his daughter, 14, had seen her too. Not mine, but a friend I used to hang with. A friend's great uncle used to be a taxi driver. He used to know the popular routes pretty well and would generally drop off tourists and regulars. One day, as he is finishing up, he gets flagged down by a pretty young tourist. He usually wouldn't pick up customers when he's about to go home, but the tourist looked distressed, so he allowed her to sit in the back. He makes small talk with her to try and lighten the mood, but she's tight-lipped and just gives him a nod or a shake when asked which direction to take. At this point, it's getting pretty late. Eventually they end up in a shady area. Friend's great uncle wasn't familiar with the surroundings, there were not many street lights to see by, so he switched on his headlights. Even with the headlights on, visibility is poor, and he can barely make out anything. Suddenly, a woman appears in the middle of the street, and he slams his brakes but still hits her pretty hard. He recognized her as the tourist woman and checked the rearview mirror. The woman is still there, but her skin is deathly pale, and she is blood dripping from her forehead. Still looking in the mirror, he asked her if she was okay and how in hell she got in front of his car. She just stayed silent and looked him in the eyes. He checks the front of the car, and the body is not there anymore. Spooked, he offers to take her to his home so his wife can call the ambulance. His house was on the way to the hospital, and they could bandage her to stop the bleeding at his house. 
the tourist still doesn't say anything. So he races back home, gets out of the car, and starts knocking frantically on the door. His wife opens the door to a panicked husband and calms him down. He immediately tells her the whole story and starts sobbing about how he's killed someone. His wife is confused throughout the whole thing because there was no one in the back seat of the car. She made him look again, and he was shocked to see no one was there. So she comforts him and thinks he's drunk, even though he would never drink on days he would work. Three days later, he passed away. Some local elderly people in that area went to the wife's house to comfort her after the funeral. She told her husband's story to everyone that was gathered there, friends, family, and neighbors. When she was finished, one of the elderly said that it was probably a spirit. Most of them are harmless, but if you happen across a malicious one, they still cannot do anything unless you invite them into your home. That story has been passed down since my friend's great uncle passed away. It gave me chills the first time I heard it. This is a bit of a strange one. I wish I was making this up. It was so creepy. I am very much a scientist and a skeptic of all things without proper evidence. I can't explain this one. I get a phone call from my best friend very early in the morning, around 2 AM he's crying hysterically. It is very much not his character. This wasn't a sad cry, this was an I'm scared for my life cry. I asked him where he was. He replied through the tears, I am on the road next to the cemetery. Will you come get me? I, of course, say yes. I get dressed, and I drive to where he said he was. I saw his car first, but he wasn't in it, he was standing on the other side of the road with his flashlight and his knife drawn. We were high schoolers. We thought we were tough, but he was as pale as a ghost. I asked him what happened, he grabbed me and cried on my shoulder, and once I got him to calm down, he said that he was driving past the cemetery, and he looked in his rear view mirror and saw a rotten corpse of a woman in his backseat. I looked in his car with his flashlight but didn't see anything in his back seat. He wouldn't go near his car. I know fear, I know terror, that was pure horror. I don't know if that's what he actually saw or how to explain it, but that poor guy was scared out of his gourd. I took him home, and we got his car the next morning. It was very strange, and I don't know how to explain it. I mean, I trusted the guy and had no reason to doubt what he saw. All I know for a fact is that I've never seen anyone so scared in my life. I live in a state where there are a lot of nice canyons and mountains around me. There's this canyon road that bends right from my childhood neighborhood to the capital of our state. One night, my friend and I were coming home, we were about 16 to 17. We decided to take this canyon road, as it's shorter and cuts about 2 miles off of our trip. We start going through the canyon, and it's abnormally dark along this stretch of road. We decided to park at the back of the canyon, where a little trailhead leads up the canyon, and hang out and take some pictures of nature. We get out of the car with our flashlights, and we notice our flashlights aren't cutting the darkness. We start walking to the trailhead, talking, and shooting the shit. Suddenly, my friend goes, oh god, dude. The voice had a similar speech pattern to ours, we both talk like skater douche brothers the voice was like that, but it was weak and in pain. I turn to him after a few moments and ask him why he said that. He turns to me, and he's like, uh, I thought you said that. We stop, and we are both like, uh, WTF? Then we hightailed it out of the canyon. We were screaming the entire time we drove through the darkness, especially me. I recalled the voice sounding familiar, so I thought it was my buddy. It turns out I heard my own voice that night, dude. It was the same as me, but just in pain, like I'd be punched in the stomach. What the duck? My grandparents live on a ranch where the closest neighbor is over 5 miles away and the nearest town of only 500-ish is nearly 20 miles away, so needless to say, they are in the middle of nowhere. One summer, my parents sent me and my brothers there for a long weekend. We had lots of fun just ducking around on the ranch, but one night I got freaked the duck out. We slept on the floor in the living room. I woke up to a weird noise. I can't describe it, mostly because it was just a noise that woke me up. I looked around and saw my grandpa standing next to the picture window in the dining room, with a shotgun resting on the wall and a pistol in his hand. I walked over to him, and he just held his finger to his mouth, then pointed outside. I looked out the window but couldn't see anything. We stood and watched for a while, and then he crouched down and pointed near the barn. I strained my eyes to see anything, but I couldn't see anything that was out of the ordinary. All of a sudden, his dogs, who were staying in a kennel on the opposite side of the house from the barn, went crazy barking and freaking out hard. My grandpa ran to his bedroom and looked out the window. He pointed it out again, but I couldn't see anything. After five or so minutes, the dogs quieted down, and he sent me back to bed. 
I never figured out what the hell was going on. Anytime I asked what happened, even now 20 years later, he just responded with the same phrase, sometimes strange things happen out on the ranch. He's told stories about the various Native American spirits. The rational part of me thinks it was just a coyote or something walking through the ranch. Another part of me thinks it was some sort of spirit. I was driving home with a friend late at night after a night out, and up ahead of us, we saw two people walking home. It was a road that connected two towns, and for three miles between the two towns, there were just fields, no street lights, and the odd house scattered alongside it. We too had made that walk ourselves after a night out many times before after not having any money left for a taxi, and so we knew it was a long, boring walk that seemed to go on forever, as there was nothing to distract you or gauge how far you had walked. The two lads we saw were walking in the same direction that we were traveling, but on the opposite side of the road. We both commented on them and said that we didn't envy them, as we knew they still had a long way to go before they got to the next town. They were about 200 yards in front of us, and just then, they started to cross the road, but never once looked to see if it was okay to cross sides. I'm coming up behind them, and because they had started to cross the road without looking, I thought they were going to walk out straight in front of me. They were about 50 yards in front of us and near the middle of the road, so I put my main beam on to let them know I was there. As I did, the whole road lit up brightly, and the two lads had simply vanished. My friend and I just looked at each other to say, WTF? When, for no reason, we both had tears running down our faces and neither of us knew why. We were 20-something men at the time, and neither of us had cried in years, but we both just became so overwhelmed with a feeling of sadness that the tears kept coming. It was another 15 minutes before we got home, and we both tried to rationalize it but couldn't. After we had driven away from that area and the tears eventually stopped, my friend joked that they were probably in the back of my car now, and the thought of that scared me so much that I ended up leaving my car at his house when I dropped him off and ended up walking home from his house, as I didn't want to drive home by myself after what we had just experienced. My family was deeply evangelical, we didn't believe in angels or demons coming to us or that dead relatives could be contacted, or anything like that, they legit called it Catholic propaganda. When I was 16, my parents were going through a pretty bad divorce, and my mom moved out to an apartment where both of us were living. I had some friends over one night, and we were bored and decided to tell ghost stories. At some point, all of my lights went off and the door to the balcony opened, it was a sliding door, so it couldn't be the wind, I also lived on the fourth floor, so it couldn't be an intruder. I brushed it off as strong winds and went to sleep. My friends were scared shless. After a few weeks, I came home from my then boyfriend's house late at night and went to take a shower. When I was ready to sleep, I opened my mom's bedroom, it was the only one with air conditioning, so we shared it, and there was this six-foot-tall woman in a nightgown standing right by the door, hunched over. She had long black hair like my mom, and I couldn't really see her face, but I thought it was just my mom getting up for a late-night snack. I called, Mom, sorry for coming late, I didn't mean to wake you up. There was no response, and she walked past me without looking. I turned my back to see if I was hallucinating, and sure enough, she was gone. That night, I had a horrible sleep paralysis episode, and to this day, I see that woman haunting me in my peripheral vision when I'm walking home at night. I don't know who she is or what she wants, she has never hurt me or anyone else, but she made me believe ghosts are real. When I was about 8, my best friend and I were leprechaun hunting in my house. We set up the broadcasting end of a baby monitor in the basement and the receiving end in my room on the second floor to try and catch a leprechaun making noise. My best friend was in the basement, and I was in my room when we both heard this awful Donald Duck type, quacking. I heard it through the baby monitor, she heard it in the basement, and we both ran to meet each other, freaked out and screaming like eight-year-old girls. It terrified us, as there was no explanation and no one or nothing in the house that could make that sound. Nothing. As we got older, we still couldn't figure it out, but I didn't think it was paranormal, otherworldly, or anything like that. I didn't have an explanation, though. I brushed it off and tried to forget about it. Years before this, both of my brothers saw red, demonic, glowing eyes in our basement. At separate times, years apart. My mom told me about this as a kid, as it shook them both up. I didn't really believe it. It creeped me out, but I tried to explain it away. As a teen, I had the opportunity to move into the basement and make it my bedroom. I refused to remember the eye incidents because I didn't want to freak myself out, and again, I tried to explain away the weird quacking incident. I don't know if I didn't believe it or if I didn't want to believe it. Probably the latter, because I wanted that basement room all to myself, so I told myself that all those things had perfectly reasonable explanations. 
But once I moved into the basement, weird things started happening. The lights flickered a lot, but I chalked it up to just old lights. But then my stereo started turning on and blinking static at 2 AM repeatedly. It was terrifying, but I told myself it was just a short or a truck going by that messed up the radio signal, or something. It was too freaky for me to allow myself to believe it was anything but explainable and reasonable. I ended up moving out of the basement for unrelated things, but I didn't argue with my parents. I was happy they were making me move upstairs. Fast forward 8 years or so. I had moved out, had a kid, and my kid and I moved back into the same house with my parents after his dad left us and I was extremely sick. My son was 4 or 5 and went into the basement to play one day. It had been converted into a toy train and playing room. Suddenly, he ran upstairs, completely freaked out, and said, Mommy. I heard a weird quacking noise like Donald Duck downstairs. I nearly shat myself. We don't have ducks where I live. We don't have farmland near us. And even if we did, you sure as hell wouldn't be able to hear them in the basement. I had denied and denied and denied that there was something going on in the basement for 20 years. But when my kid experienced the same weird, very special thing that I had, I just couldn't deny it anymore, I don't know what it is. I do believe in real evil, demons, and such, but I don't know if I necessarily believe in ghosts in the traditional sense. I don't know what it is, but I now believe in more than just what we can see. Hell, I'm still skeptical when I hear other people's stories. But I know there's something going on. I'm not a skeptic anymore, I just don't know what exactly to believe. I sort of believed in the paranormal but never really had any experiences to justify that any of that was real until this happened. The day my brother died, my best friend came over, and we just sat on his bed in our basement and cried. Our basement was half finished, and the other half was storage, which was separated by these two heavy doors that were held in place with a friction spring ball thing and a wall. They were basically hard as hell to open. As we were sitting there crying and holding on to each other, I grabbed a picture of my brother and just said, I can't believe you're gone. The moment that sentence left my mouth, those two doors slammed open, and I saw a shadow figure standing in the darkness. My friend started crying harder when that happened, and he just grabbed onto me for dear life. He and I rarely talk about it, but we both saw and experienced it. I am a true believer now. A more recent experience it had just happened two days ago. I live up the street from my grandma and grandpa, and we have an extremely strong connection. We get made fun of constantly for being so close. I was taking a midday nap, and all I remember is waking up screaming with my mom trying to calm me down. I don't remember what I was dreaming about, but my mom said she had never heard me scream like that in my life and was crying. 10 seconds after I gained consciousness, my phone rang. It was my grandma telling me that my grandpa fell down, hit his head, and she couldn't get him up. He's fine now and just has a bit of a goose egg on the back of his head. I can only believe that something yanked me out of sleep so that I would be able to react to that moment. I used to be skeptical about anything paranormal until a couple of months ago. I was at my friend's place, we were drinking and talking about life and stuff. I stayed past the night curfew, this happened after the mandatory lockdowns all around the world, and most countries had nighttime curfews in place, so I had to spend the night there. I stayed in the guest room, and suddenly I heard a loud bang on the wall behind me. I looked through the window and saw nothing, I was on the third floor. After that, I laid on the bed and tried to get some sleep, but every time that I was about to fall asleep, something or someone touched me, waking me up. I didn't mind it and tried to sleep again, but suddenly I felt it again, and again, and again. At the sixth or seventh time, something hit me so hard that I freaked out. I grabbed my cell phone and texted my friend, but he didn't answer, he was asleep. I just grabbed my stuff and went home. Next morning, my friend told me that sometimes weird stuff happens in his house and that I was rather lucky since whatever is in the house likes to make his presence known. Since then, I have avoided going to this place, or if I do, I just stay outside in the yard. My friend and I saw a translucent pair of white, misty, ghostly legs run past the front of my car, and it disappeared as soon as it hit the curb of the sidewalk. We both looked at each other, with me quickly saying, describe what you just saw, to which he confirmed what I slash we both saw. We still talk about it every now and then. There were other instances in my life that were questionable but not as undeniable as the aforementioned story above. That said, another friend and I felt a very ominous and heavy slash cold presence around us, especially around our feet, when ghost hunting at a supposedly haunted cemetery near my town. We both looked at each other and exclaimed, do you feel that? We never felt anything like that before, and we drove away. I was on the shitter at a friend's house, and the door flung wide open with no one on the other side. What makes this questionable is that the door was quite heavy. 
I needed some pushing to get it open. That and my friend and I were the only ones at the house at the time, and it's impossible to move around the house without the floorboard squeaking even just a bit. This friend of mine was pretty heavy set at the time, there was no way he'd be in his room in a split second without making a noise. My parents' house is haunted. As a kid, lots of weird stuff happened in the house, but I convinced myself it was all in my head. I moved back as an adult, so far. I've gotten up in the middle of the night, looked down the hallway, and saw my grandfather standing in front of my parents' door. My grandpa died before I was born. I've only ever seen pictures of him. No scary vibes from that one, just the sense that he was checking in on us. There's a ghost that likes to duck through the hallway. You'll see it go from one room to the next when no one is back there. The hall bathroom has a little girl ghost. I've been helping my niece take a bath since we both heard a little girl getting mad at me for almost getting soap in my niece's eyes. Said ghost has also happily called me a liar when I promised my niece ice cream. There's a male ghost that hangs out in my parents' bathroom. My mom saw that one sitting in the bathtub when she got up to get ready for work. The ceiling in the hall bath has a handprint on it. We've replaced that part of the ceiling, painted over it, etc. The handprint always comes back. When we moved into the house, the bathroom door scared everyone. In the wood grain, there was a screaming demonic face. That door got tossed out pretty fast. And tons of shadow figures and random orbs. So yes, I believe in ghosts because I live in a freaking haunted house. Not especially ghosts. My father has always been superstitious, and like everything he feared, he learned everything about it. So I know a lot about superstitions, whether they are from common sense, from another time, or from real witch or pagan beliefs. Crows don't bring death, they usually help the dead find their way. They don't announce anything, but a death could have occurred in a house they stand in front of. Black dogs, on the other hand, are supposed to bring a message of death. One night, I was going out, and at the end of the street, a black dog stared at me. He disappeared when I looked away for three seconds. The next morning, on my way to work, the dog walked past me, looking at me. He seemed familiar, but I had never seen him before. The police came this evening, telling me they found the body of my father this morning. He died the night before. I never saw the dog again. Black dogs are the messengers of death. I mean, when I lived with my folks in the basement, we'd have some funky stuff happen from time to time. My CD player would turn on and start spinning a CD even though it was unplugged and the battery area was empty. The TV would change channel or volume, and stuff would move around at random, never when you were looking at it, though. We'd leave my room, play in the kid's room, go back into my room to grab something, and my toys might have rearranged slightly. But the one that got me was after a stupid ghost tour in Victoria, BC. I went to what had been a brothel back in the gold rush days, where at one point, when they'd torn up the floors to renovate, they found the remains of like 10 women. I felt weird all the way to the hotel. I went to bed and woke up at like 4 in the morning, and for some reason I started thinking about the nasty bouncer they'd been telling us about, and then for some reason I started thinking, oh, but he didn't mean to hurt those girls, he must be just really misunderstood, he's not a bad guy. Then, after a wait a minute what the duck moment, I open my eyes, and there's this dark, shadowy shape like 6 feet tall wearing a bowler hard just staring at me. I locked my eyes on the bastard for like a solid 10 minutes, just frozen. The light in the room was increasing because it was late summer and dawn was on its way, and the shape never lost its definition, nor did it move. Then I bolted and shook my partner awake, and the second I looked away, he vanished. I grew up in Corona, California, where we had a supposed haunted piece of property where a house that once stood was burned down. The property was tucked in the hills of Corona, so you had to go to the end of a cul-de-sac, then take a mile-long dirt road to this particular property. My friends and I would go at night all the time. At night, I had a couple of experiences, but due to my skepticism, I would explain them away in one way or another. I would typically chop it up to other kids they're screwing with us. That was until my friend Johnny and I decided to explore the property during the day. First, when we pulled up and parked in the cul-de-sac, we noticed a father and his two children, one boy and one girl, unloading their bikes from their truck. Once they unloaded, they headed down the dirt road on their bikes for a nice family bike ride on the dirt trails. We followed shortly after going down the same road towards the haunted property. My friend and I stayed taking pictures and screwing around at the burned down foundation while the family kept riding ahead. My friend and I stayed at the house for at least two hours before we decided to walk back down the dirt road back to our car. On the way down that dirt road, we both heard very clearly in a young girl's voice, Dad, wait. Daddy, where are you going? Wait for me. 
We thought absolutely nothing of it, assuming the dad and son may have been pedaling too fast for the daughter to keep up. We only heard it once, so we continued walking down the dirt road to our car. Once we got to the end of the dirt road and back to the Culp de Sac, we both froze and turned pale white. The truck that the family came in was gone. They left well before we even came back. That dirt road is the only way in and out of the property. There are zero ways around it. Not only that, but there are no other buildings or people on that property, it was completely abandoned. And when people do come screw around there, they all have to park on the Col de San. I tried a million ways to convince myself that there was a logical answer, but almost 20 years later, I still haven't come up with anything. The craziest part of this story is that my experience made me really want to read up on that property and what makes it haunted. Well, it turns out the house that once stood there belonged to a wealthy Corona family in the late 1800s. Apparently, the parents went out of town and left the kids with a nanny for a couple of days. The nanny was a drunk who locked the kids in the basement often. One night, she passed out drunk, knocking over a kerosene lantern on her way down. That lantern burned the house down, with the children trapped in the basement. To my understanding, only the children died because they were unable to escape the basement. One of my best friends had a period of five to six years where she was persistently followed by something. Here's how it started. She traveled to Asia on a backpacking trip with some college friends one year. They went through Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, Vietnam, etc. I think in Cambodia, she said they stumbled upon this rural graveyard that didn't seem like much at first. No gravestones or anything, just a few flowers, offerings, and some urn or vase looking things. She and a few friends roamed around there taking pictures because it was such a random cropping, nowhere near town. Anyway, after that, they started experiencing weird things, seeing shadowy figures from the corners of their eyes, losing time, and hearing very distant singing everywhere they went. Eventually they get back to the States, and my friend said whatever followed them there followed them here. I never met the other two friends, but I've experienced it firsthand. We'd be chilling in her living room when you'd get a whiff of very strong incense, for example, despite there being nothing of the sort anywhere in her house. You could feel the air move when that smell hit, and it was almost like an invisible crowd was standing in the room, rustling around. At night, you'd see figures that were almost always out of sight, but they were there. They were always small, but not children, more like elderly people. Anyway, needless to say, I was really freaked out and refused to go to her place for a long time because whatever followed her around lingered too. She once stayed with me, and for roughly two days after, I would hear very quiet but distinct chanting or singing like it was coming from next door, despite the fact that I lived in a freestanding house. I'd smell very strong currents of flowers and have a sense that I was being watched. This was such a thing for us and our group of friends that we'd invite random strangers to hang out with us just to record their reactions. It happened every single time, without fail. People would sit with my friend for maybe a day, and for the following two to three days they'd experience it themselves. No one could explain it, but even the most skeptical among us experienced the exact same phenomenon in totally different homes. Eventually, she said she visited some temples to give prayers or make offerings, and someone told her that in Asia, a lot of abandoned graveyards are considered dirty by locals because of hungry ghosts that have been forgotten by family. It's apparently easy to pick up undesirable spirits or lingering things if you're not careful. That's why people usually avoid those places without taking proper precautions. So yeah, that's the one thing that still confuses me to this day. I know what I experienced, and more than 10 people can say the same. It's beyond weird, and I try not to think about it too much anymore. In college, I had to do a folklore project on Bachelors Grove Cemetery. If you don't know anything about Bachelors Grove, it's in an abandoned cemetery that is now located within the forest preserves in the south suburbs. Anyhow, for this folklore project, I had to physically go visit the cemetery. I had to bring an audio recorder or video camera, interview everybody I saw who was willing to talk to me, and then transcribe the notes. These notes I had to hand in to my professor. While I was there, I continually had issues with my digital camera and my video camera. I would get back to the cemetery, and they would refuse to turn on. Or, I would be in the middle of an interview, and the camera would cut out. This happened two days in a row. I got pretty frustrated because I really needed the footage for the class. On the second day, a woman told me that it was very common for electronic devices to go out when you were at Bachelor's Grove. She said that the spirits attempt to feed off of the energy of the batteries. She told me that if I just walked out of the cemetery and down the path away from Bachelor's Grove, my video camera would be just fine. I didn't think anything of it. But, because my cameras were not working for the second day in a row, I decided to leave. The moment I walked back to my car and put my cameras down on the back seat, 
both of them turned on automatically. They were on full charge. They've never malfunctioned since, and I still don't know how to explain it. I also took a lot of pictures of the cemetery. Honestly, I was hoping that I could get a picture of the white mist, flashing orbs, or some of the other ghostly apparitions that other people have claimed to capture while taking photographs in the cemetery. Well, I wasn't very lucky. I spent time analyzing all of my photos, but, alas, I didn't see anything suspicious. Then one day in class, I was once again scouring the photos, looking for something interesting. This time, I saw a strange image in the background amongst the trees. The image, to me, looked for all the world like the outline of a man. His coloring was the same as the trees and the brush. But I could see the distinct outline of his head, dark spots where his eyes would have been, and even some hair. The weird part was that I thought he had what looked like a giant cat on his shoulder. I don't know why it looks like a cat to me. And I mean, like a cougar. It looked like a cougar's head was resting on one of his shoulders. Because the coloring was the same as the trees and the brush, I figured it was probably just some foliage in a weird shape. So, in a couple of days, I went back to the grove to investigate. I stood in the same exact place and looked at the spot where I saw the man. There was nothing there. I held up my camera and took a few more pictures. Nothing showed up. I still thought that it was just a strange trick of the camera. I didn't give it any more thought. A few weeks later, as I was continuing my research, I read a story that made me stop. Apparently, there was a farmer who was plowing his field back when Bachelor's Grove was still a farm settlement. According to the story, something spooked his horse, and the horse ran into the lagoon, pulling the farmer under the water. The farmer died. Now, some people claim to see this farmer. But the strange part is that, for no reason anyone can explain, when the farmer appears, he has two heads. I read that story weeks after I discovered the image in my picture. It's always kind of made me wonder. I've always had this kind of activity happening around me, and most of the time it can honestly be explained by wind, house settling, pipes, or anything like that. There are truly paranormal occasions, however. A couple of years ago, I moved in with my cousin to split the mortgage on his house, and I guess whatever has been around me my entire life has followed me there. My cousin isn't a big believer in anything spiritual, but the doors shutting and opening on their own, cabinets doing the same, and beating on the walls or ceilings over the course of a few months may have finally convinced him otherwise. One night I was home alone, and my cousin was out at a bar with some friends. I went to bed around 10 and woke up just after 1am I stepped out of my room to go to the bathroom, and my hallway was ice cold. I went from a 72 degree room to a 40 degree hallway. I got this really dizzy, sick feeling and walked to the end of the hall, where it instantly got warmer and the nausea went away. I walked back up and down the hall a few times, but the feeling was gone. I brushed it off, since I've had experience with things like this happening before, and just went to the bathroom. After I was done, I was stepping back into my bedroom when I heard this dull thud come from the kitchen slash living room area. I walked back down the hallway, and standing where the hallway meets the foyer, I could see into the living room and dining room, and everything looked okay. I stepped into the dining room to turn the corner and go into the kitchen, and I flipped the light switch on. Every single cabinet and drawer in the kitchen was wide open. I texted my cousin, and he said he was still out and would be back in an hour or two. I took a picture of the kitchen to show him in the morning, closed all of the cabinet doors, and went back to bed. As I'm walking through the dining room, I bump into one of the chairs that, 30 seconds ago, was tucked under the table, but now it's out in the middle of the room. At this point, I start to get a bit weirded out, so I just go back to my room, climb in bed, and try to fall back to sleep. The next morning, I'm talking to my cousin before I leave the house, and he goes, oh, let me show you something, and reaches for his phone to show me a picture he took of the kitchen when he got home, with about half of the cabinet doors and drawers hanging wide open. He took his picture at 3.13 am, about two hours after I had closed them all back. We've had less and less stuff occur over the past couple of years, though. I still see figures and full-on apparitions sometimes, but it's seldom. The other night I was sitting on my bed writing something when, out of the corner of my eye, I saw my cousin poke his head around my doorframe and ask me what I was doing, so I told him I would be done in about 5 minutes and then I'd be ready to go. After about 30 seconds, I realized that he was still staring at me, so I looked up to ask what was up, and the face looking back at me wasn't my cousin's. It wasn't anyone's. It was like trying to see someone's face through murky water. It disappeared as soon as I made eye contact with it, and I haven't had anything happen since. That was about two weeks ago. The first house I bought was a fixer-upper. The story from the neighbors was that the lady who owned the house had died there of old age or dementia. She said she had three kids, one who died there, 
one she was caught locking in the basement, and the other who had nothing to do with her at all. I didn't think much of it, I never believed in that crap. So I started fixing the place up, replaced all the windows, pulled all the carpet, replaced a few fixtures, proceeded to pick up my bedroom, and painted the whole house. The whole time, I had an eerie feeling in there, I kept feeling like I was being watched. Some of the windows didn't have blinds yet, and the light inside was reflecting on the glass, so I couldn't see out. So I thought maybe someone was spying on me, or maybe those stories the neighbor was telling me were just stuck in my head. I shake it off and get started in my bedroom. As I start in there, I notice the closet door has a deadbolt on it. I'm like, really? Why would you put a deadlock on the outside of a closet, and then I pull the door open. On the inside of the door were scratch marks that were obviously human. I had considered maybe she abused animals, but then I noticed the fifth scratch mark indicating a thumb on each set of scratches, about two to four feet high most of them, the height of a child. I was appalled. But unfortunately, I was broke and could not afford to replace the door. So being a guy of few means, and I mean seriously, I only keep five sets of clothes, six if you count my suit, I decided to just paint the door shut. Yeah, I don't believe in ghosts. So moving on, I painted the door, filled in the cracks, painted the rest of the room, filled in the cracks completely, then went to the kitchen. This is about 11 p.m. About 3 a.m., I started wrapping up in the kitchen, jamming to some alternative rock, and the radio started playing static. It'd pop in for a second, then go out for like one to two seconds. I tried to mess with it, but I was like, duck it, tomorrow I'll bring my iPod, and I just turn the thing off. So I wrap the paint, rollers, and junk in plastic, rinse out my brushes, and start walking around to secure all the windows and doors before I leave. As I walk towards the bathroom, I notice something to my right. I look over into my bedroom, which is only about 8 feet away from where I was standing. The first thing I notice is that, for one, the light is off, which was on. Second, the door that I had completely painted shut hours ago now stood completely open, exposing the hideous scratches. The light was shown from the hallway onto the door, and to the left in the shadow was something, someone. A figure. I don't know how to describe the feeling other than sheer panic. I might have even screamed, I don't remember. I fled like a girl, I remember I took off running as fast as I could and fell out the front door. If I didn't have my car keys on me, I would have taken off running on foot, but, thankfully I did. I got in my car and sped off as fast as I could. The panic feeling didn't stop when I got in my car, which only freaked me out more because, in my fear, I drove off into the country, trying not to slow down to get as far away as possible. I sincerely thought I was going to die. As I was sure I was going to die going 100 miles per hour around this corner out in the middle of nowhere, I heard all this junk clash around in my trunk. Then I remembered that I had taken some knickknacks out of the basement of that house to try to sell on eBay. I slam on my brakes, pop my trunk, and throw the stuff out of my trunk like a madman, completely alone in the middle of this dark country road at about 3.30 am. As soon as I finish, I get back in my car and take it off. This time it was different, the farther away from the stuff I got, the better I felt, until by time I was almost back to where I was staying and it was gone completely. I went back to the house the next day just to grab my tools. I was going to sell the house. I didn't know what I was going to do because I was broke, but duck living in there. When I went inside, I'm not really sure how to describe it. But I felt good, I felt like the house welcomed me. I know it sounds stupid, but it was a really good feeling. I looked around, and the door was still open, scratches and all. But that didn't even bother me. I popped the hinges and broke the door, I used the closet without a door the remainder of the time I lived there. I lived there for three years. I was 12 and woke up in the middle of the night. My door, which is usually closed at night, was wide open, and I could feel someone glaring at me. I looked up to see a tall man right outside my room looking towards me. He seemed really angry, and he would just keep staring. Although my dad is short, I just assumed it was him because he's the only other male in the house. I called out and asked him what was wrong. There was no response. It only took me a while to notice that something was seriously wrong, and I got so scared and hid under the covers, praying the figure would go away. Now that I think about it, why the duck didn't I scream for help? I guess I was just scared senseless. I was crying and shaking under my covers when I started to feel as if he wasn't looking at me anymore. I looked out of my covers. And he was right in my face. JK, the figure was nowhere to be found. So I ran out of bed, locked the door, and shoved my chair under the handle. Like that would stop a supernatural entity. I guess I fell asleep somehow after that terrifying incident because I woke up to my mom pounding the door and screaming for me to open up. I was scolded for locking the door like that, and just to check, 
I asked my dad why he was staring at me in the middle of the night. He had no idea what I was talking about. So I tried to chalk it up as one, my dad was sleepwalking, which he had never done in his life, two, I was dreaming and somehow locked the door and shoved the chair up in my sleep, three, someone else came into our house but didn't steal anything, omg, which is way worse, but something just told me that it wasn't any of the above and I had an encounter with a ghost. I was babysitting my 5 year old niece, and we were standing on our balcony. There's the road, a cow field, and then the woods, which could all be seen from there. I saw her staring into the field, and she saw me watching her and said, what is that? I laughed and said, you know what that is? It's a cow. A confused look went over her face, but she kept looking into the field. Even the black thing? I looked, but all the cows were brown. Those cows aren't black, they're brown, I said. No, she said, still staring. The black thing. There was no black thing. I approached the barrier of the balcony to look closer, but she wrapped her little arms around my leg. Where? I asked. She pointed at one of the cows. The black thing on the cow. The mister. He's eating the cow. At this point, I figured she was playing a game, so I said, he must be hungry. Shall we invite him in for dinner? Her eyes went wide and she grabbed my leg harder and started saying no, 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 with tears welling up in her eyes. I comforted her and told her she was silly, that she was only joking, and that there was no one there. She got all angry and said, there, there, pointing, and then suddenly stopped. She whispered to me, he saw me, I want to go inside now. So we did. She kept asking me if I really didn't see him, over and over again, you didn't see the mister? No really? With that genuine childlike confusion, like when we tried to teach her left from right and her forehead crinkled up, she kept asking me to confirm that he wasn't going to come into the house, and I promised he wouldn't. That's it. I thought it was a joke at first, but I saw sincere fear and confusion on her little face, and she's a horrible liar. I don't know what she meant by the black mister eating the cow, but I do know that the farmer moved his cows out of that field the next day. There was a small door that led to attic space in my bedroom, 11 years old to 13, and it became habit that I would shut the door as I walked into my bedroom a couple times a week. I didn't think anything of it, I just assumed my mom didn't close it all the way when she left it. After a while, I made the mistake of joking with her when she made a comment about me not picking up after myself. I said something like, every night I have to close the attic door behind you. How about you shut it all the way when you're done? She then informed me that she hadn't been in the attic in months. I asked my brother. Nope. I asked my father, but nope. So then I started to pay really close attention to it. Making sure it was closed in the morning, checking it after school, and checking blaster dinner. Then head up to bed and. Open. After a couple months of wondering, studying, and experimenting, I thought I'd see what happens if I just don't shut it. I opened the door before school and checked it after school, it was still open. I checked after dinner, and it was still open. Before bed, still open. Now I'm lying in bed, my mind going crazy with the open door across the room. I decided to check it out, so I rolled over and focused on the black space in the attic, only to see a face staring back at me. Bolt downstairs, wake parents, get ridiculed by brother, switch bedrooms with brother, and move into a new house about six months later, due to expanding household. A new physics teacher and his wife bought our house. I could have forgotten all about that event and chalked it up to me having an overactive mind. But then, in my senior year, I discovered how awesome our physics teacher was. It became my favorite class and, by far, my favorite teacher. At the end of senior year, my friend and I took our VHS camcorder around town, doing mostly silly things, but then took it to my old house to see what they'd done with the place. We got a very fun tour, and I got to tell stories about all the projects my dad did that were still part of the house. Then the wife leads us upstairs to show us the sewing room. I ask, jokingly, notice anything strange in this room? And her face goes blank. On camera, she asks what I mean, and I try to shrug it off but end up saying something about the attic door. She confirmed that every time she comes up to sew, the attic door is open. She then tells us that the second day of being in the house, their dog, a German shepherd, had gone into the room but would not go back downstairs. He started barking and could not be consoled, and then jumped through the window, landing on the tin roof over the porch and then running off. The dog did not come back until the next day and has not stepped foot into the hallway that leads upstairs since. I had the initial thought that I could show my parents and brother the story I had on film, but I decided to just let it be. I'm from Texas, and my husband is from Maine. We both live in Texas now, but during the summer, 
we attempt to escape the heat and visit his family in Maine for a few weeks. I had my fair share of experiences growing up in a haunted house, so I was raised as a believer. Weird things seem to happen frequently, but I don't like to automatically attribute them to a ghost or whatever. I like to think that I'm a fairly logical person, and I like to try to debunk weird stuff. That being said, my husband is pretty skeptical and doesn't speak easily. So that makes this story even more interesting. Around 11 p.m. one night during one of our main trips, he and I were sitting on my father-in-law's front porch and were just chit-chatting. The porch is raised and looks down over a backyard that runs to the tree line at the edge of thick woods. We were just hanging out, sober, I might add, when we heard what sounded like an adolescent boy singing scales. La 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 la. It was just background noise, and honestly, we were so used to living in an apartment in the city back home, so we didn't really think anything of it. In fact, we were annoyed. My husband actually said, do you think he knows we are here? That could be awkward, I laughed, and then I realized what we were listening to. We were hearing what sounded like a boy, in the woods, late at night, walking back and forth in the dark woods, singing scales over and over, in pitch black. My husband was still bent on the idea that he should give the guy some warning that he had an audience, so he sang a tune of scales back to him. La 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 la. La la la. Came the response from the trees. It sounded like whoever it was traveled from deep within the woods to instantly stand right at the tree line beside us. It was loud, and it sounded as if whoever, or whatever, it was, had instantly covered a huge amount of space to go from somewhere in the woods to just a few feet away from us. We both instantly had the fight or flight response, and, without even thinking, we both jumped up as if we were going to run into the house. Something about it felt weird, and we had flipped a switch from harmless, awkward fun to terrifying. There's a house back there, right? I asked my husband. There has to be, he said back. We were spooked and went in the house anyway. We both couldn't stop thinking about it, and suddenly the details began to sink in about how weird it actually was. First, if that was an actual person, we would have heard them stomping around in the woods. It sounded as if they were pacing back and forth over an area of about 20 feet, and the woods were thick. You couldn't walk through them without cracking leaves and twigs. Second, there were no lights through the trees. If that was actually a 12 or 13 year old boy, unless he had night vision, he would have needed a flashlight to accompany him especially if he was taking careful steps as to not make a sound. If there was a flashlight, we would have seen it through the dark. Third, how did he instantly cover that much space to get right beside us at the tree line? I know that voices can be carried on the wind, but there was no wind that night. It also sounded enough like a real person, not a floating voice on the wind, that we both automatically assumed there was actually a boy out there. Lastly, we asked my father-in-law just where his neighbors lived in those woods. He just looked at us and said, I don't have neighbors. There's no house back there for miles. People in Maine don't tend to have close neighbors, but the next day we went back and checked anyway. There was no sign of people anywhere. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get this out. So when my wife, then girlfriend, first moved in with me, I began to notice the occasional sleepwalking episode. Nothing too crazy, just maybe once or twice a month if you wake up and find her standing in the dark hall talking to herself or in the kitchen looking in the fridge. I'd lead her to bed, and that would be it. Fast forward till after we are engaged a year later, and these sleepwalking incidents start, including bouts of screaming and waking me up in the night laughing hysterically. Weird, but she went to a doctor and was out on medication. Thanksgiving. Three months before marriage. We're at her family's house, and I'm out back talking to her father and having a drink. At one point, I casually mention sleepwalking. He gets really quiet and asks how long it's been going on. Sensing there was a story, I pressed, and he finally sat me down. My wife is half Puerto Rican and half Italian. Her dad is Italian and very skeptical of bullshit. When my wife was very young, she had awful night terrors and sleepwalking incidents three to four times a week. The doctors couldn't do anything. After a while of not sleeping and worrying over her safety, my mother-in-law's sister was called to see her. She's a practitioner of Santeria, she ain't got no crystal ball, yada yada, and my mother-in-law thought she could help. My father-in-law called it bullshit, but I let it go down anyway. The sister stayed a week and started doing her shit, but my wife's night terrors got worse, to the point where many nights they couldn't wake her up from them. The sister kicked my in-laws out for a night and stayed with my wife. The next morning, she left, saying she was done and exhausted. My wife had no more night terrors as a child. Now, apparently, years later, my wife's aunt told her parents that there was a demon latched onto my wife as a child. And she had to trap it, but she was afraid that eventually it might get out again. 
My father-in-law still thinks it SBS, but my bringing up the new incidents reminded him of it all. It freaked me out a little bit, but I figured it was all bullshit, so I let it be and never mentioned it to my wife, who apparently remembers nothing of the events when she was a child. The sleeping and walking at home slow down, and everything stays normal. A few months after our wedding, I wake up to my wife standing in the middle of the bedroom. I stood up to walk her back to bed, but she turned and smiled at me, which halted my progress. I'm here. What she said was decidedly not my wife, and I have never been more terrified in my life. She walked back to bed, got in, and went back to sleep. Three years later and no more incidents, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't still wake up in a slight panic at certain footsteps. My first home up north had such an eerie vibe. I would always shudder and feel extremely uneasy walking up the stairs. My bathroom was at the top of the stairs, and I remember one morning in broad daylight after I dropped my kids off at school, what appeared to be my boyfriend at the time in the bathroom doorway facing in, wearing his usual attire, a black tracksuit. He kind of sidestepped behind the door, there was a mirror behind it, so I thought nothing of it until I walked a few steps past the bathroom door across the landing into my bedroom. There was my ex-boyfriend still flat out, fast asleep, wearing a blue t-shirt. I shook him awake, saying I had just seen him. We checked behind the bathroom door, as I was in absolute panic. I had an intruder in my home. The bathroom had a slit in a window, and it was impossible to get out. When I got friendlier with the neighbors, they told me that the house had been left empty for a couple of years. Because there were a couple of deaths there and no locals wanted to rent it, the previous owner literally drank herself to death in the back bedroom after her husband died. Their son, who was on drugs and deeply troubled, left the house and hung himself on the top of the stairs within a few weeks. He was apparently the same height, color, and aesthetic as my ex-boyfriend. No matter what he was doing, he also wore a black tracksuit, like him. He just didn't look at all ghost-like in any sense. More like an actual human intruder who just disappeared. The first time I ever experienced something paranormal was at a hotel. We were doing something like a mini-vacation. My mom was married to this guy, Steve, at the time. It was my mom, Steve, my sister, and me. That night, my sister and I heard banging and static-like noises. I thought maybe it was the room next to us, but later, when we got home, my mom and I were sitting on the couch when we heard this throaty breathing sound. I asked her what that was, and she thought it was me. She later brushed it off, but my sister and I both slept down in her room for the longest time. My mom and Steve divorced, and she had to find the cheapest house possible. She was a single mom working at a grocery store. The one we ended up in only had entry through this large cemetery. My story cemetery house is loosely based on the house. There wasn't actually any demonic possession, but some scary crap happened. Everything was cool at first, but after some time, we started hearing scratching on the walls. We thought it was raccoons, but I'm not so sure now. Right before I started my freshman year of college, my mom wrecked my car while I was drunk driving. She had a 99 Maxima, but I wanted to drive the new car, and she let me. I guess she felt guilty somewhat, though when I told her she wrecked my car, her reply was that she bought it. She was that kind of mom who messed up. Anyway, after a while of driving the car, I started feeling weird. You ever get that feeling that something is going to jump out and get you? Something is watching you. I started feeling that way when I'd drive, especially on my way to school when I was alone. Then the rearview mirror started moving on its own. My mom didn't believe me, of course, though she'd had her own experience in the house. She'd seen glowing green eyes floating in her bedroom, which ended up being my bedroom shortly after she told me that. My sister had witnessed the mirror move too. One night, our mom had a guy over, so we decided to go see a movie. We lived in. It was a small town, so we had to go to this bigger town about 30 minutes away from home to go to the theater. We didn't even get halfway there before we turned around. I feel like something is in the backseat waiting to get us, I told her. I wish you hadn't said that because I was just thinking the same thing, she replied. Then the mirror moved. We hauled the ass home. Along with the car situation, I was spooked in my bedroom. It had several windows, and my cat had messed up the blinds on one. It made me very uneasy if my boyfriend, now husband, wasn't spending the night. Finally, I decided to put my crucifix necklace in a little compartment on my dash and start praying before I drove. I seriously felt threatened, and like whatever this entity wanted, I wanted to wreck the car. Things felt better for a bit after that, but then one day I crossed this bridge. I don't know what told me to look in my rear view, but when I did, that's when I saw it. In the middle of the bridge, in broad daylight, there stood a shadow figure. It didn't have any features, but it was shaped like a person, and it was completely black. 
I saw it a few times after that, but not long after, I got a new car. My mom kept taking mine away over dumb SHT, so my boyfriend bought me my own. Also, I started going a different way to school. Not long after that, I moved in with my dad. My mom came back on the 4th of July from a party, both her and my little, 14-15 year old, sister drunk. It was bad. The police were called. But yeah, after moving out of that house, I never had any more experiences. I'm not sure if it was the house, the car, the bad energy from all the issues we had, or a combination of all of that. Either way, I'm glad I don't have to deal with it anymore because it was scary to feel like at any moment something you can't even see most of the time could hurt you. I hate even thinking about this, as it's dark and freaky right now, but here goes. I was living in Great Falls, Montana, at the time. About 30 or so miles to the east is a state or national park, I can't remember which, called Monarch. Monarch is now a very popular place for camping, fishing, snowboarding, you name it, you can do the outdoor activity of your choice. So, it was a weekend away from the labors of work, and my friends and I decided to go camping. We approached everything with the youthful ignorance of welcome stupidity and decided that since it was dark, freezing, and well past midnight, we should go four-wheeling. Far too many of us packed into a typical red jeep and began our foray into the forest. Keep in mind that this was the end of autumn and the beginning of winter, meaning it was ducking cold. It's Montana. And it's ducking cold. So we are a few minutes into our endeavor and decide to use a floodlight to guide along a stupidly narrow path, which, honestly, I'm not entirely sure was even designed to be used as a road. The floodlight does not do us too many favors, as the carrier was being bounced around to the point of not being able to hold the damn thing still. Not to mention, he was an asshole and would just turn the stupid thing off. So we come to a point in which we are going to turn around and make our way back towards our camp when we look off of the side of the road and see a pale, and I mean pale to the point of almost a white or blue, in amongst the trees. Roughly 50 yards away, standing stock still was a man. A naked man. The lights on the jeep were still off at this point, and our floodlight man shined the light on him. He was standing about 40 to 50 yards away, just far enough to where no real discernible detail could be made out, but you could certainly tell this was a naked man standing in the middle of a freezing forest. As we stared in horror or shock for the next few seconds, our floodlight man called out to him, asking if he was okay or if he needed any help, to which his wonderful and comforting response was to slowly and creepily back into the woods behind, moving slowly down the hill without ever looking away from us, until he disappeared. Needless to say, we don't go looking for him, and in all honesty, I have no idea if this was his idea of a joke, if he was drunk, if he was even real at all, or if we were just going insane, but that's by far the moment that stands out as the most paranormal to me. Oh, and yeah, I didn't sleep until the morning.